And lots of people wonder, how do I improve my aim? They watch some guides and then they train for hours and hours in aim lab only to come back to Valorant feeling like they haven't gotten much better. If you've ever felt like that, then today we're gonna help you out. What's going on, Pro Guides fam? It's your host, Kangas, and welcome to our eighth week of Improvement Saturdays, where each week we cover an aspect of tactical FPS games so you can understand Valorant at a higher level. This week we got an exciting one because we're talking about aim and how it factors into your gameplay. Most people have a misguided sense of what aim really is in relation to tactical FPS games, so we're gonna break down aim into a few key concepts and then build up the correct way to approach it. So hit that sub button and let's get into it. So before we begin every topic, we of course need to set the stage and first get a good idea of what aim as a concept really is. In all honesty, I think almost all of us have a good idea of what aim is in isolation. It's just how accurately and quickly you can control your mouse and sensitivity to point your crosshair at whatever you're targeting. Aiming by itself is a really simple concept and most people treat it as such. But as you can probably guess, we wouldn't be making a video about this if it was really that easy. Just like how being strong doesn't translate to being a good boxer, having crisp aim doesn't translate to being a good Valorant player. Many people understand this as there are other important aspects like decision making and game sense. But even if we don't consider them, there is a misconception that if you can isolate the one-on-one -on -one duel with an opponent, aim is supposed to be the decider. So perhaps a better comparison should be, being strong doesn't translate to having a good punch, just like how having crisp aim doesn't translate to having a good shot. Now let's talk about why. Now the whole misconception of aim stems from the idea that what makes a nice shot is predominantly just a result of having great aim, as what we see when we witness a good player hit a headshot is mostly the precise control over the crosshair that they have. And when you consider how aim is meant to be your ability to control the crosshair, then that kinda makes sense, right? Well, let's consider the fighter comparison again. When you witness a boxer land a knockout punch, is it just raw strength that made his punch so powerful? From an inexperienced observer's perspective, what we mostly see is the punch being thrown out and the opponent's reaction by getting hit by it. Since most people don't have the experience to really see the elegance of the boxer's punch, factors that could have generated power such as body positioning, his momentum, or even his opponent's momentum are all left unconsidered. And that's also why we have to run into this misconception regarding aim as a whole, because most of the community are not highly experienced in the intricacies of aim in relation to Valorant. We have this notion that aim is simply how well we can point and click, and there aren't many experienced players to correct this idea because they're more focused on improving their own gameplay. But that's why you got us at Pro Guides always stressing that finding a mentor is absolutely game changing for improving as a player. Sometimes we may create bad habits or misconceptions regarding Valorant that hurt our own growth, and the best way to correct those is to receive the guidance of highly experienced players. And you know where you can find immortal and radiant level coaches? ProGuides.com. Not only can they analyze your gameplay and figure out your strengths and weaknesses, they'll also give you insights needed to set you on the right path, as well as provide one-on-one -on -one lessons tailored to your needs. And we also have pro courses made by pros like Sentinels 10s and Liquid Scream, so if unlocking your potential sounds interesting to you, you're more than welcome to come check us out. So anyway, what is Aim and Valorant really then? To answer this, we're gonna propose a different way to look at the game in order for us to better understand this question. Here's the take. Valorant, like most tactical FPS games, is a game of aim distractions. To benefit from good aim, you need to first master reducing the distractions to your aim. Now, if I've lost you already, don't worry, we'll explain. Aim distractions are factors that prevent you from relying solely on your mechanical aim. For example, recoil is an aim distraction, because when you start spraying a gun, you now have to worry about the recoil's effect on your aim. Another example is your gun's accuracy and recovery, because if your gun is inaccurate, it doesn't matter if your aim is on point. Other things like your movement, the enemy's movement, the angle you're taking, and more are all distractions that prevent you from being able to rely solely on aim. And in the bigger context of how we approach winning a gunfight, most of these distractions affect your aim at a mechanical level as well, which is why it feels so different to shoot in aim labs or in the practice range compared to shooting in an actual game. That's why games like Valorant and CSGO seem to be less aim intensive than games like Overwatch or Quake, but still produce players at the top level whose aim is on par to top players in aim intensive games. Yet, while your aim is hindered by the many distractions that you need to deal with in Valorant, aim is not obsolete, as you can probably guess. Having good aim is always a helpful tool, but there is of course a caveat, how well can you rely on aim in Valorant is first reliant on how well you can reduce the effects of distraction in your gameplay. That means that you need to be able to manage the effects of distractions like recoil, recovery, and movement before you can accurately see the effects of your aim at work. 
so depending on how well you can counter these effects, your aim's translation into Valorant will change as well. But don't get me wrong, managing distractions to aim is a skill in itself. After all, these are all aspects that affect your aim, so the act of managing them is actually a form of aim as well. So before you think that your current aim is useless, understand that having better aim indirectly helps you effectively reduce distractions, as long as you know the proper way to counter the distraction. Now we'll also cover some easy training techniques to practice this, but first we need to cover an interesting insight before we continue. But before we do that, it's time for our question of the day. Which gun do you think is the hardest to control in Valorant? Personally, I think it's the Stinger. I just hate that gun and pretty much never buy it because I can never control the spray pattern, but let me know your answer in the comments below. Back on topic though, what has always been an interesting topic to me has been the comparison of smooth aim and snappy aim, where smooth aim seems to be this elegant version of aim, while snappy aim is some raw version that relies on flicks. For the smooth aimer, their mastery of reducing aim's distraction is what enables their aim to flourish. For the snappy aimer, their mastery of raw aim overcomes some weaknesses in their aim's distractions by substituting it with precision. It's sort of like a balancing act. To aim well, you need to reduce your distractions, but to aim well, you also need to aim well. You can't reach the top having one without the other. Now, the secret to good aim is efficiency, and the interesting part is that the better you get as a player, the less you have to rely on raw aim. But at the same time, to reach that level, you need to also be exceptionally good at aiming. You can't rely on only the smooth aim to win, because better players will force you to adjust to their positioning. Meanwhile, you can't also rely on snappy aim only, because better players will force you to make bigger flicks that you aren't as comfortable with. So to become a perfect version of a player, you need to be good at reducing distractions while also being a solid aimer as well. So now that we've corrected our perception of aim, let's talk about some ways to practice reducing the effects of distractions on it. Today we'll focus on one of the biggest distractions, which is your movement. To do this, we're going to head to the shooting range. As you may know, movement has two interesting principles. One, movement causes your crosshair position to change, which directly affects your aim. And two, movement causes your gun to be inaccurate, which means that you need to stop before you shoot. That means to counter the effects of movement as a distraction, you need to first be comfortable with countering the effects of movement on your crosshair positioning, as well as understanding when you are accurate after stopping. Let's first focus on the first principle and learn to counter the effect of movement on your aim. To do this, place your crosshair on a bot's head and then try to keep your crosshairs on top of it as you move left, right, forwards, and back. In doing so, you're actively countering the effect of movement on your aim as you move around. The more comfortable you get, the better you are at reducing the first principal effect on your aim. If you're having trouble with this or you find that your mouse can't keep up with the movement, it might mean that you need to change your sensitivity to feel a bit more comfortable. Or if it feels like you're constantly over adjusting, perhaps lowering the sensitivity could also be a good idea. Next, practice the same idea but with counter strafes. So have your crosshair on a head and then take a step and try to keep your crosshair on top of the head once again. By doing this, you're reducing the effect of a counter strafe's effect on your movement, which is very important as we approach the second principle, which is your movement's effect on your accuracy. And speaking of which, the second principle actually plays on the first principle too, because by virtue of us having to stop before we shoot, that means we also have to factor in the effect of moving as well as stopping our movement on our aim. Additionally, we have to time our shot to match when our movement ends, which is another aspect to take note of. So to practice this one, try to incorporate what you just practiced and move while having your crosshair on top of a head. Then choose when you want to stop and take a shot immediately after you end your movement. The goal here is to maximize your timing with the counter strafe, as well as be on target when you fully stop. Start slow and then build up speed when you become comfortable. Once you become proficient with this and you start to become comfortable with reducing your movement's effect on your aim, you'll start to be able to practice this at a very fast speed while also target swapping like this, which not only helps you master your movement, but also trains your aim in the process. So in conclusion, mastering how to reduce distractions in your aim is a massive stepping stone for becoming a better Valorant player. And many people starting out don't get enough guidance regarding this hidden aspect of the game. Hell, even high-level players and immortals don't understand this completely, so that's why if you build the fundamentals now, you'll start to set yourself up for a lot more success in the future when your skills finally get tested. It is crazy to think that it's already been two months since this series started, so for those of you who have been with us from the beginning, thanks for sticking with us. I hope each episode has helped you understand more about how to become a better Valorant player. And for those who are watching Proven Saturdays for the first time, we still got a lot more to cover in the future, so make sure that you stay tuned if this video helped. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Most importantly, best of luck on the grind, everybody. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one.